Facebook. Now, every Tuesday and Thursday, we have our man Tim Ord on. If you want to go to your uh, web browser, you can go to ord-oracle.com. Go ahead and check him out. Additionally, you can go over to tfnn.com. You can go over to the services tab. Once your internet service provider gives you enough bandwidth, you scroll down. We have two fantastic lecture series right here. The Secret Science of Market Tops with Tim Ord and six secret ratios every trader should know with Tim Ord. Again, the value of 149, that is a complete steal. Tim, how are you doing? Good, thank you. We're on again. We are on again. Let's see what's going on. Obviously, you're getting some stumbling today, definitely on some of the yearnings, and I'm just kind of curious what we're looking at right now. I see a lot of people talking about RSI and VIX in the den. Let's see if there's anything you're looking at uh, in regards to that. And of course, we have the, uh, Man, this time just marches on, doesn't it, Tim? We're, we're yeah. when is it? Tuesday. Next Tuesday, we have the elections. Yeah, next Tuesday. So uh, a lot of Great. things going on. So this is kind of a, a you know one, once uh, every four year type market. So it's a little bit different than than regular markets. Uh, yeah. So, but one indicator that's worked pretty well uh, is uh, chart one. Yeah. Uh, that's we we showed this Tuesday. And really, nothing's really changed. The market's down. I thought we might get to 570, and here we are. I'm long a couple of days ago, but uh, I'm not really changing my mind on on the bigger picture. Bigger, uh, I think I said yesterday in my market or in my report, either the market's going to have to decline today or tomorrow uh, for it to decline because next week seasonality is really bullish. Not saying I'm not sure what Monday will be. Monday might be a nothing day because Tuesday is an election. Yeah. Uh, so I we'll have to wait and see. But anyhow, I did go along a couple of days ago. I was kind of waiting until the end of the week, and uh, wish I had it, but I didn't. But I'm long right now. I'm staying long. But anyhow, the the bottom window uh, on chart one is advanced decline with the five day average. It's a pretty simple uh, indicator well and it kind of just defines basis uh, it doesn't really design to, to pick major bottoms out of the market what it's designed for is just finding a short-term lows sometimes the lows are, are lasting uh, they can appear at major lows uh, sometimes they don't but uh, normally when you get a reading a five-day reading below 0.65 last Friday we hit 0.63 and uh, so that was suggest we're going into low. The market sometimes will uh, dip a little bit lower, but in general, you're setting at the lows. Yeah. So Friday's low was uh, uh, about a percent or better, percent and a half, maybe a, a higher than where we are right now. But anyhow, this indicator is usually pretty good picking out, you know, support areas. So it's kind of one of the reasons why I jumped along. I thought, well, maybe uh, – I missed a low on Friday, and so I got long, but now we're seeing probably the low right now. But anyhow, this one indicator suggesting downsides minimum. At a minimum, you should at least flip sideways here uh, for the next m month, maybe two. Uh, if you look at the sideways consolidations back in uh, 2023, it had a couple of minor lows there, but those lows lasted a couple of months each. So... Uh, That'd be the worst case scenario. The market just flips sideways from here. Right. But I'm thinking we're, we're going to do something more. Let's go to chart two. Yeah, fantastic. Or second chart. Uh, this kind of looks at the bigger picture. Uh, this this the top window is the NYSE summation index. I showed this also on Tuesday, but when you get a reading just kind of out of the blue, uh, major lows form when this indicator hits below minus 700, then rallies to plus 1,000 within two months. That's where major bottoms uh, form. And uh, those blue and uh, red lines, and those, those times were triggered. But sometimes market just goes up to plus 1,000. That's usually a sign of strength in an uptrend. Usually you don't get major uh, tops when that happens. So you can have some consolidations, but there's always new highs are still expected so how high is right. high uh well i think we'll hit new highs before the year's out it's one of those indicators that will probably uh that's what's this indicator is signaling that so even though we're pulling back here uh this is not a major high of any consequence i'll put it that way what we're trying to do is find where the next low is so let's just concentrate on that let's go to chart three yep and here's it uh the short term low i thought the uh 
uh, SPX tilt ratio is just going to keep trending up. And if that was the case, then uh, then we wouldn't have this pullback. Well, we got the pullback, and I thought we might. And so I was kind of teetering back and forth. And we got it at a real narrow range, and finally we kind of fell through the recent lows. Well, where is this port? I got circled on the chart uh, in uh, mid-July there, a circle. Then uh, first part of August, I got another circle. Then uh, first part of about mid-October, actually October 14th, we got a, a, a circle another time. And uh, there's a blue circle right now, but we'll talk about that in a minute. But the market, if it gets too far away from the norm, the norm is that this is uh, the SPY with the Bollinger Band on it. The norm is the dotted line on the chart. If you get too far away from it, uh, you'll come back to it. If not, break and go down below it. But it always comes back to it. So it's kind of the norm of what the market is doing. So if you get a close above 50% of the trading range, a close above the upper Bollinger Band, the market is getting stretched too far from the uh, dotted line. So this outer, the outer lines of the Bollinger Band are two standard deviations away from the norm. Okay. So if you're below the Bollinger Band, that's two deviations. If you're above the Bollinger Band, that's two deviations above. So what normally happens, you pull back. So I, I, this is a short time frame. I just circled three of the times when we did it. And, and pretty much October 14th, that was pretty much the high. More or less flipped sideways. And right now, uh, we're going down and we're actually testing uh, the lower Bollinger Band right now. That's where I got circles at Bollinger Band and Gap. Yep. You see, see there? So, you know, we're testing a gap and we're also right smack at that Bollinger Band. If we close below the Bollinger Band, that would be a 50%. So we got a little ways to go, but tomorrow may do it. I don't know. I bet tomorrow's an update, personally. Yeah. Because <laughs> season, seasonality is actually turns bullish. But anyhow, uh, if you close below the Bollinger Band, that would be a bullish sign. If we close 50% below, I don't know if we'll get that or not. But probably this vicinity, the 570 area on the SPY is probably going to be support. And I said that in my market letter. And I think the last time we were on the show, I thought that was a possible target also. Yes. And it turns out it is. So um, how far down from here? I, I think this is probably about it. So it's just kind of a one-day wonder. Uh, so, you know, if the market's going to decline, the only really part of the decline can really happen now is probably tomorrow. And tomorrow, uh, since we're basically touching the Bollinger Banner right tomorrow, if we actually close below it, uh, you know, it'd probably be a good trade for commodities because your chances of keep falling are pretty nil. Right. So I'll have to wait and see if we close below it tomorrow and we get a narrow range close probably think about the S&P contracts. Uh, so, yeah, I can totally uh, see like a shakeout happening today and like a little rebound uh, when we start tomorrow. Uh, Tim, stay right there. I know we got to look at some gold as well. We have the gold contract trading off about 1.49. Some of the miners are getting hit. Folks, stay right there. We'll be right back. Welcome back, everyone. We have the composite off about 2.4%. Dow Jones Industrial off about 0.57. You have that SPY off about 1.5. We're joined right now by Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle. Tim, before we went to the break, I believe we were just going to start looking, uh, traversing into the realm of uh, gold. They have the GDX right now off about, uh, let's see here, off about 2.5% today. Everything is kind of getting hit today in a weird way, you know? Yep, yep. Yep, I see that. So let's look at the uh, short term. Let's go to chart four. Yep. Uh, okay, chart four, you know, the bottom indicator again, this is kind of a short term deal. Uh, the It's a GDX up down volume with a 50 day average. You need it to be above zero for uh, in an uptrend as we're, uh, when I made this chart, it's right at the zero line right now. Uh, what I do think, though, if you go to the top window, uh, I have a dotted blue line across the top yes and that comes that comes in around 40 give or take and it's probably going to be support because you hit a new high uh you jumped above the uh, high of 2022 so i think that's probably going to be support i think 40 range is probably going to hold uh on a bigger time frame uh there's really 
nothing suggests a meaningful top. Uh, I think there's, there could be a, a sideways consolidation here around the 40. I think that's about the worst case, but I don't think there's a top of any consequence. Go ahead, let's flip to chart five. Yes. Uh, this is the reason why um, this chart's really good at, at actually showing divergences. Uh, the bottom window is a cumulative advanced decline. Next window, that's for the GDX. The next window up is a cumulative up-down volume, and the top window is GDX. So I kind of mark different times so you can tell, like in December of 2023, GDX made higher highs. Uh, the up-down volume made lower highs and, and advanced decline made lower highs. That's a major divergence. Then if you look back in May and June of, of this year, 2024, GDX actually pulled back. And both those indicators just went sideways. Mm -hmm. So that was kind of an internal sign of strength. Uh, again, GDX in uh, July of this year made lower lows. But... If you notice, that's the green area I, I got noted. And the indicator just actually matched the previous lows. And right now, which is the, uh, the purple area, GDX has made higher highs. The up-down volume has also made higher highs. And advanced client made uh, higher highs. And also, it showed GDX, uh, uh, like September, made a lower low against the previous low. And both those indicators made higher lows. And right now... We have no divergence. I mean, both markets, up, down, volume, have turned around uh, or, or have both pulled back. But the real key here is will be the next rally. If GDX right. makes a new higher high and both those indicators make lower highs, that would be time to worry, uh, at least for a consolidation, not, not any top. So I'm thinking we're probably going to find support right around where we are right now. Because that's the highs of, of, of previous highs in the past. So I'm, I'm think since this is not showing any divergence of any consequence, uh, we're just probably pulling back. And the market, uh, as far as the equity market concerns, I actually have it really strong all the way into year end, possibly into January. Uh, and that strong part of that rally starts next week. So I think probably. Uh, these markets are kind of just whipping around here. I don't see anything dangerous on the equity market or the uh, gold stock market. I think this is, I think we're entering a, a new time. All the back and forth of years past yeah. are gone. And finally, we're getting, we're getting into an impulse wave that I think may last for at least another year. Similar, I mean, you may have some consolidations, may last a month or two, but that consolidation, uh, be more of a sideways move instead of a retracement because impulse impulse wave don't really retrace that much. Yeah. So I, I don't see any danger. I think there's a lot of money to be made in the market, equity market and the gold market here. And I think actually gold market may outperform the equity market uh, over the next 12 months because it's due for that, I guess you might say. So let's, let's look at uh, another chart here. Let's go to chart six. Yep. And uh, this is momentum chart. Momentum rules all market. You know, it's all right, momentum rules all indicators. If a momentum's up, I don't care what the indicators say, the market's going to keep going up. And so that's why I kind of designed this indicator. It works pretty well. Um, the bottom window is a cumulative advanced decline on a weekly time frame. Uh, and I got the Bollinger Band on it. And uh, the next window up is a cumulative uh, advanced decline for GDX. And I got the Bollinger Band on it. And the top window is GDX. And this is measures cumulatively the up-down volume on a weekly time frame and cumulative advanced decline uh, for GDX on a weekly time frame. So right now, we're pretty much uh, way above the buy and sell signals occur when the, the uh, both indicators close above the mid Bollinger Band, which is a buy signal. And that's those blue lines across the chart. Yep. And the sell signals come when both indicators close below the mid Bollinger Band, and those are the red lines uh, across the chart. And we got a buy signal. I think it was back in March of this year. And if you notice, this indicator is still making higher highs and really hasn't even pulled back uh, 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 much at all. Uh, so, to me. There's, there's, gold stocks are still accumulating the up volume compared to down volume, and there's more advancing issues. Uh, the advancing issues keep expanding, declining issues. So that's 
very bullish situation. So this is not a top of any consequence. So uh, can we pull back? Yeah, but not much. Uh, so I don't see any trouble. Uh, and again, if you look at the, you know, the, the time sequence between these buy and sell signals, I mean, uh, the last one we had, we had a sell signal, and it looks like January 2021, and that was a three-year sell signal, and we finally got a buy signal this year. Uh, so at least a year and a half is minimum, and uh, sometimes they can last three, four years. So I, I think we're due for, you know, we had three years down, you know, we may have three years up now finally. So I don't know, maybe at least two. So, but a lot of these gold stocks, I know on a monthly time frames, I'm looking at them, and a lot of these little bitty stocks are starting to show volume, Big and time. the monthly mid Bollinger bands are starting to uh, bend up. So the small ones are going to come to life here in the coming weeks. Yeah, so, that's what we're hoping so, for for sure. Yeah, you'll see it. So, <laughs> well, Tim. Uh, yeah, thank you so much for coming on again. I guess we're going to see you. Uh, what is going to be election day, huh? Yeah, election day. That would be fun. Yeah, that will definitely be fun. Well, Tim, <laughs> thank you so much for coming on again. We'll see you then, okay? All right. Thank you. Bye. Folks, if you want to see more from Tim Ord, you can go right over to the Ord-Oracle.com. Again, he talks a lot about tops. If you want to learn how he's judging that, you go to TFNN.com. Go to the services tab. You can check out the secret science of market tops with Tim Ord. Right now, folks, there at there. We'll be right back.